3 Tick Fishing with Cut E is a great way to get even more experience out of barbarian fishing, but it can look kind of crazy. So, is it even worth it? Absolutely. What is up, scapers? My name is Fancy, and today we are going to talk all about 3 Tick Fishing with Cut E. I know I'm saying it's so weird, but at this point, I don't know how to stop myself, so. I know that whatever's going on in the inventory may look just like nonsense, but trust me, there is a method to the madness. And like most things in life, once you get a little bit of background information, everything will be a lot easier to understand. So let me explain. 3-tick fishing with cut E is an extension of the usual 3-tick fishing method. However, instead of keeping your inventory clear by dropping the fish you catch, you instead cut open the fish, and then you devour their remains like your barbarian ancestors? What? Whoa. Whoa, way too much there. Let's, let's rewind, let's back it up. <laughs> After you catch a fish, you can use your knife on that fish, which then gives you a chance to receive either roe or caviar. Roe comes from leaping trout or leaping salmon, and caviar comes from leaping sturgeon. I'm going to refer to roe and caviar as just the food from here on out for simplicity because it's food, like even in real life it's food. The beauty of food in this game is that it usually takes three ticks to eat, and that's very convenient because we're fishing on a three tick cycle, uh huh, it's all coming together now, mm -hmm. This means that we can eat the food from the fish and continue our three tick cycle and repeat this process forever. That being said, those of you who are listening may have noticed something. I said that you have a chance to receive the food from the fish. So whenever you use your knife on a fish, you have a chance to get roe or caviar, and that chance, why am I saying it like that, scales based upon your cooking level. Just like a chef making sushi, a higher cooking level means you have better knife skills and will actually be able to turn the fish into something edible. So if you do successfully cut a fish into roe or caviar, you also get a bit of cooking experience, which is the whole reason we're doing this method. And along with that, there is a flat 75% chance you'll receive another item called fish offcuts. This item, the fish offcuts, basically just act as bait. And you will also use this automatically before you use your normal bait, which is just something to keep in mind for later on. Now, there's still one glaring issue. Catching fish scales with your fishing level, and cutting the fish into food scales with your cooking level. So you're not always going to catch a fish, and when you do, there's no guarantee you'll actually be able to cut that fish into food. So this seems terrible. Like, how do you actually sustain this? And like, are we just forced to react to everything? No. Don't worry. Thankfully, we can kind of solve this by breaking the method up into two phases. The first phase is collecting the food. In this clip, I'm going to continually use my herb on the swamp tar to start my three tick cycle, and I will be cutting all of the fish that come in. But I am not eating the food yet. I repeat this process until I have about five or six pieces of food in my inventory. Now that we have some food stockpiled, it's time to anamorph into a hungry hungry hippo, because it is time to eat. Make sure to start your three tick cycle with your preferred method, whether it's knife and log or herb and tar, and from there, once a fish comes in, click on a piece of food to eat it, then back on the fishing spot to continue your three tick cycle. As for timing, you do this at the exact same timing as you normally would to start a three tick cycle. So in this clip, instead of clicking on my Harlander and hovering over my Swamp Tar, I'm instead just hovering over a piece of food, and I'll click that food as soon as my rod hits the water. Another thing to note is that when you click on a piece of food, you're not actually eating that piece of food, but instead the first piece of that type in your inventory. So if I click on this piece of row, I'll actually be eating this one. Or if I click on this piece of caviar, I'll eat this one. This will come in very handy because as you can see in this clip, it enables you to repeat some of the mouse movements again and again, which makes this one of the easiest parts of the method. By the way, I also like to eat the food starting at the bottom of my inventory and then make my way upward. I find it's just easier and more consistent, but you need to try that out for yourself. Once I get down to only a couple of pieces of food remaining, I'll stop eating the food and revert back to using my herb on my tar to once again begin stockpiling more food until I have about five or six pieces in my inventory. Then you repeat the cycle all over. So one more time, just to be very clear. The first phase is stockpiling food. For me, that means herb, 
tar, knife, fish, fishing spot, and I'll continue this until these inventory spots are filled. Then we move on to the second phase, which is eating. For me, that means food, knife, fish, fishing spot. And we do this until we only have one or two food left. Then repeat, over and over and over for the rest of your life. You're not allowed to do anything else anymore. If done properly, your inventory should never fill up completely, and the cooking XP should be a straight bonus to the usual fishing, strength, and agility XP you typically receive from 3-tick fishing. Now, there are some things that you need to keep in mind. This method is significantly more challenging to learn than traditional 3-tick fishing. It will take you longer to learn, but that's okay, because once you master it, it is strictly better in terms of XP than the traditional 3-tick method. I find that it's also easier to get off cycle, which basically just means you're not going to be catching any fish. You'll probably see yourself eating food after food without noticing any new fish appear in your inventory, or maybe you might see yourself doing the dreaded fish cutting animation. So if this happens while you're learning, I personally think the best approach is just to fully reset. Take a step back, drop your inventory, and just start over. Once you get a better hang of everything, then just revert back to using your urban tar, because once you see the herb lore animation starting, then you know that you're about to be back on track. So, yeah. Inventory management is also much more important. You need to figure out what actually works best for you though. Do not be afraid to go back to the bank over and over to get different setups to try new things. Personally, I probably banked 20 or 30 different times to test out different setups to find what worked best for me, and I found that this just gelled, so I stuck with it. I know some of you, probably most of you honestly, are just going to copy my setup exactly, so I'm going to explain my logic behind it. I always keep my urban tar in these two inventory slots, it's just what I'm used to. Of course, I also have the necessities like feathers, a pestle and mortar, a barbarian rod, and a spare herb in case of mistakes at the bottom. I never make mistakes. But then I have party hats blocking the edges of my inventory, which forces all of the fish to filter into these 10 slots. I also use two knives. This way, I never have to move my mouse too far to use the knife on a fish, which I find to be one of the most challenging aspects of this method. That being said, you will absolutely need to do some trial and error to find out what works best for you. Some people may just want to use a knife on a teak log, and then they use that same knife to cut the fish. Some people may want to use 12 knives. It's completely up to you. Just try it, figure out what works. Another thing you need to consider is runelight plugins. In my last video, I explained how to set it up so that you can left click drop fish. However, with this method, you may not want to do that as sometimes it's easier to click the fish before the knife, and if that's enabled, you would just drop the fish. So as such, I reverted the changes by holding shift and right clicking the fish, then setting left click to reset. Something I also forgot in my last video was the use of anti-drag in Runelight. This is just a default plugin that makes it easier to click on items without accidentally picking them up and starting to drag them around your inventory, which would of course ruin your 3 tick cycle. These are my settings, but just try them out and see what works for you. There's like one option. So. Finally, I know this is frowned upon in some high level circles, but here's the thing. I don't care. It's very easy to get disorganized when you're learning, so you can use the inventory tags plugin to outline or highlight certain items. Some people may want to just highlight their knives as they're building muscle memory, or maybe you find yourself clicking on a fish instead of a piece of food, which is ruining your cycle. You can highlight foods to tell you what to click, or you can highlight foods to tell you what not to click. It's all about what will make this easiest for you, so I want to make sure that you know the option is available. Also, by the way, the knife's click box is like a lot bigger than the actual picture of the knife. Some people don't realize this, but like you can click way over here and it'll still click on the knife. So don't worry about being super precise. Oh, I also use Entity Hider. I think it's very important during this method specifically. So turn it on, click these boxes, and let's move on. Wow, I thought this would be like a two minute video. I guess not. Anyways, without any further ado, here is my recommendation on how to actually get started with 3-tick cut eat fishing. Start by just making sure you still know how to 3-tick fish. Warm up those hands, get comfortable in your gaming chair, and get a little bit of XP in your body before you start moving on to step 2. Now, with your inventory clear, you are going to start cutting the fish you catch. They will fill up in your inventory in order, so we're going to click herb, tar, knife, this spot, then the fishing spot. It doesn't matter if we catch a fish or not, we are clicking on that spot. If we catch a fish, it will be sliced and diced. If we don't catch a fish, 
we end up canceling the action of our knife. See, it's no longer highlighted. This way we actually fish at the fishing spot instead of using our knife on it, which would do nothing. Now, just keep working on this. Don't worry about eating any of the food, just keep trying to cut every fish that comes in. If you get a fish, the next cycle you'll click on the next spot. If you don't catch a fish, you'll be clicking on the same spot again, as you can see in this clip here. This is also where you should be experimenting with your inventory setups. Make sure that you're not just able to cut the fish, but that you can actually do so comfortably and consistently. Don't be afraid to bank an experiment. Seriously. After you've given everything a fair try, fill up your inventory with food and then let's practice eating. I know it sounds silly, but I think it actually does throw a lot of people off. Again, you want to eat the food at the exact same time you would normally be using your herb on your tar, and then just as if you did use your herb on your tar, you want to follow it up by cutting a fish and then clicking on the fishing spot and repeating. I also recommend starting your three tick cycle by using your knife on a log and then following it up by eating. I tend to think this is easier as you should already know what the three tick animation looks like for whatever your preferred method is to start it. So you should know that you're starting the cycle correctly. And I think that helps. After starting your three tick cycle, see if you can eat an entire inventory while staying on cycle like I'm doing in this clip here. If you can do that, then you're doing it. You just need to start putting everything together. This method will take some time to master, but I find it to be a very challenging and rewarding method that's one of my new favorite ways to skip. Just keep at it. I actually really do have faith that you can do it. Like, comment, subscribe. I love you all. Goodbye. Bonus tip. Those who follow me on Twitter will have already seen this, but if you keep making mistakes and ending up with some herb tar, simply equip a salamander which uses tar as ammunition, and everyone will just think that you're being a good pet owner making the salamander some food. Second bonus tip. You can replace the party hats with anything, but replacing them with Admiral Pies that you eat periodically will increase your XP rates slightly, and the leftover pie dishes will keep your inventory nice and clean. Okay, bye. The way, I'm going to include some uncut footage in the description, which may help so you understand the logic I use when doing this method. And it's probably going to be only a couple minutes of fishing, then that same footage slowed down, but it is in there in case anyone needs some reference footage. Subscribe!